What's up, DCS crew? It's Carlos back at it today with a bit of a more in-depth review on the Kaiser uh, Yorkie frame lock flipper knife from uh, designer Ray Laconico. This is model, excuse me, model number KI three five two five A one. This is the version with the whole and uh, non anodized titanium frame. Yeah, really nice knife. I've been carrying it for a little bit and I'm ready to go ahead and give my thoughts on this awesome little knife from Kaiser. So stay tuned and check out the video to see what my feedback is on it. And I'll go ahead and let the credits roll now. So if you have been checking my videos recently, I had a new knife day uh, video with uh, three new knives and amongst them was the um, the Kaiser Yorkie. This is based on the custom from Ray Laconico. I've actually posted a few photos of it on my Instagram. If you're not following it, go ahead and check it out. It's Instagram.com slash Daily Carry Solutions. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and give you uh, my two cents about this knife. I've been carrying it for a little while, like I said in the intro. Um, it's a it's a highly functional, uh, slim blade. Um, it's nice and compact, as you can see. It fits in my, my hand. I can pretty much get four fingers on there. And um, yeah, it's a nice little flipper, fl frame lock, titanium uh, frame, S35 VN steel from Kaiser and it shows the Ray Laconico. Oh, here we go. Um, it's even on there. Actually, just his uh, his maker's name, the maker's name on there. So um, the first time I actually had a Ray Laconico knife on here was the titanium version of this knife here, the Kaiser Gemini. Um, I had a, um, I guess you could say a duel between the G10 version, which at the time was lent to me by a gentleman named Arnold Urbano. Uh, it was green G10 with VG10 steel against the titanium S35BN. And believe it or not, um, based on how I carry and what I use my knives for, the G10 version ended up being uh, the one that uh, took that match. But in this case, I have another um, Ray Laconico knife, and it is... The Kaiser Yorkie. So um, let's go ahead and talk about it a little bit. Like I said before, it's based on um, a custom Yorkie design that he has. Um, right now they have two versions available. They have one without this hole and blue anodized titanium. And then they have this version, which has kind of, I guess you could say like a recessed hole um, that kind of adds to the aesthetics of, of an overall plain, um, plain frame and frame lock knife. Now, uh, a couple things you can notice right off the back, and I, that's why I went ahead and I brought some of these Kaisers out here. If you notice, any of the titanium Kaisers that you're going to see typically have this type of pivot screw. It's uh, actually, I'll go ahead and show it on the Envoy as well. Okay, and the cool thing about the newer knives that are coming out for Kaisers, um, uh, titanium models, and, and you know, for their, uh, their Vanguard line, which already had the plain pivot screws, is an upgraded plain pivot screw but unlike the ones that are on the vanguard models which are just which have which are basically um which go straight up and then they have the uh the the, the screw uh, hole this one actually goes up it has some flat surface to it and then it has the, the torx hole there so um whoop, let me go ahead and try that again there we go um so yeah now that i did that let's go ahead and talk about um, the, I guess you can call it flippability. Okay. Um, it has a very snappy detent. Um, it's, it's, I don't know what it is about this. I've actually lubed it. I've, I've, you know, uh, flicked it out a couple of times. I don't know if it's because of the fact that it's a frame lock. Um, but every time I, I actually flip this knife, it comes out with authority. But the thing is, it is very difficult 
uh, to flip. Once you're used to other kinds of uh, Laconico knives, like uh, I've been using this one for quite some time, and the detent on this guy is actually very, very light. So if you're used to something like this, or say something of the Kaiser, you know, the Envoy, I mean, that is a very, you know, that those are light detent, and then you get a nice, um, a nice results from that. But in this particular case, with the Kaiser Yorkie, you'll find that it's a bit more difficult to be able to go ahead and um, actuate the flipper. But once you do that, the knife comes out, I mean, 99 and a half out of 100. It happened to be that one time where it's, you know, I took it out like that because I hadn't really put any pressure on the, the flipper tab. But you put, you know, just the right amount of pressure and it comes out. So that said, let's go through the pros uh, for this particular design. Um, I will start with one pro that is pretty much indicative of most of uh, Ray's designs. Okay, um, I'm a big fan of his designs because he doesn't, he's not, he's not a very gaudy designer. His designs are usually very simple and effective. Um, the aesthetics of this particular design, the build, everything about it is very nice and clean. Um, the only thing that isn't is basically this, uh, the titanium pocket clip, which by the way is very sturdy. It doesn't have any um, any uh, parts where you're going to have any weak um, any weak spots in the titanium clip, so it's going to be nice and sturdy. Um, and I found that even though it doesn't look like it's very, uh, uh, you know, it, the handle is very shapely, it's not very shapely, there is kind of a, a, a slight curve here that when you hold it in your hand, it actually, you know, between the flipper tab that's here, that has no jimping, by the way, um, it, it, you know, you can actually get a pretty good purchase. I can get three of my fingers and then kind of like wrap my fourth one uh, towards the bottom and be able to go ahead and get um, some purchase on this particular knife. Um, also, because of the size, what I typically do is I put the base of the the uh, the frame at uh, right here in the, the the webbing of my palm, and flick open the knife, and it is good to go. Always works like that every time. In fact, you can also, if you have bigger hands, you can you put your thumb right here, and just go ahead and flick it out that way. So. Um, one thing I really liked about it was the clean build and the overall design. Um, you're going to see that this kind of mimics the um, the design. It takes a couple of design cues from a slightly bigger brother um, that was issued through another company. Um, you would know it as the Keen um, that was built specifically for Mass Drop by We Knife Company. Um, it's slightly bigger, and um, that being said, I'm going to go over the specs of this guy, and I'm going to compare it to the specs of the Keen, so you know the difference of the two. So, this knife, um, the overall length is six and an eighth uh, inches. The Keen itself is almost eight inches. It's just under that at seven point nine inches. So this is quite. A, it, it's it's a smaller size knife. Um, the blade length on this right here is two and a half inches and on the keen is just under three and a half at 3.4 inches okay um the blade thickness okay you're gonna find it's 0 0.12 on this guy so it's uh it can get some good slices but not quite like a uh oh i don't know like a delica or um the the kershaw dividend things like that um and with the keen it's a bit thicker at 0 0.16 inches okay um the handle length that you'll find on this particular knife is 3.62 inches as opposed to four and a half inches on the keen so there is a big difference there it's almost an inch um the handle thickness Okay, that you find here. This is actually 0 0.44. It's under half an inch, and then you will find that the keen is slightly thicker at right at a half an inch. Now, the biggest difference is the weight, and obviously the size goes ahead, and it um, it plays a very large hand with the weight. This actually. Um, weighs less than three ounces. It came in at 2.93 ounces, and the Keen itself uh, came in at 4.4 ounces. Still a lightweight knife, but not quite as lightweight as the Yorkie, okay? Now, um, where they deviate is the, the available designs. Um, 
this is actually gonna, I guess, be a con for most people. Not really for me, because I really don't care. I'm a righty, but if you notice, it's only tapped for right-hand carry. There's no left-hand carry, presumably because of the fact that this is a frame lock for the right hand and has the clip set up that way as well. Um, Ray has in the past gone ahead and provided uh, left-handed versions of his knives for um, discerning customers, and they've really accepted that in the market. Now, if they're gonna come out with a left-handed version of this knife, I guess they're gonna have to wait to see how this sells, and then uh, they'll go ahead and provide it based on that. But for right now, there's this style, and then like I said, there's the blue anodized uh, titanium version. Uh, both right-handed with the right, uh, with uh, the, the frame lock, okay? So there's basically those two styles that you can get with Kaiser. With Mass Drop uh, for the Keen, there are actually nine total designs. So it's three colors, if I'm not mistaken, in three different designs. There's the standard uh, titanium handle, there's the one with the portals and the holes, and then there's one with basically a, a line, a, like a recess line through the middle, okay? So there's three versions. Um, for each uh, each design. And then aside from that, uh, so that makes nine total designs, and then you have three other ones that are plain, uh, you know, titanium, but they are, you know, you can get them in a gray, uh, gold, uh, I'm sorry, like a bronzed, and a purple, if I'm not mistaken, for left-handed users. So in total, you have 12 of the Mass Drop Keens, and then you have two of the Kaiser uh, Yorkie. So uh, I guess it's a bit of a con because, you know, you don't have something for lefties, you know, in comparison to its bigger brother uh, from another mother. So um, there's that. Now, um, as far as steel, you're pretty much, I mean, this is this is a great steel that you can use. It's S35 VN steel. Um, I mean, as far as premium steels, this is, you know, the, uh, the gold standard for uh, for everyday EDC use uh, in a premium knife with titanium handles that you would see commanding a price at you know over a hundred dollars and we'll get to the price in a bit but uh, I did want to talk about that now this um, also uh, with uh, with means of carry this is not a big knife so it's not used for heavy tasks and I find that it makes a really good companion for um, office EDC so if you carry you know at the office uh, you know, you're in khakis or in your slacks or even, you know, you're, you're wearing jeans on a casual Friday. You can slip this into your pocket. And uh, while it's not a deep carry clip, it actually works extremely well because of the blade shape and the usage. You can choke up on this and get some nice, um, very uh, precise cuts with this particular drop point blade. And um, a little bit about the blade. The blade itself is stonewashed and it's a nice flat grind um, on this drop point, as you can see here. Okay, now, um, yes, it uh, it is lightweight, like I had mentioned, from um, you know the comparison to the Mass Drop Keen, and um, I mean, like I said, it's, it's less than three ounces, and that's a really good um, uh, point to make because when you are carrying stuff in your pocket. Uh, me personally, I carry, you know, an Olight, like uh, this M1T, um, and a Smith, uh, excuse me, a Swiss Army knife along with my pocket knife. So I want to make sure that whatever I'm carrying, it's about as light as possible because between one thing and another, my spare mags, my pistol, um, you know, my wallet, my, my phone, my keys, um, you know, it, it can really pack on the weight pretty quickly. So um, anything I can do to kind of reduce uh, that weight is is very much appreciated and at less than three ounces this actually helps a quite a bit okay and um for those who are interested in purchasing this knife and maybe customizing it the good thing about this version is that you can essentially anodize this any color you choose because of the fact that it's plain and um, so that does give you a bit more choice um, if you want to go ahead and send out and have a company do it or you want to go ahead and do it yourself with with you know one of those DIY YouTube videos to be able to go ahead and anodize it by all means you can go in on this it's very easy to take down as, as you can see the screws I mean it's a pretty minimal design being kept together with these screws here on the front and back and then you have the uh, lock bar insert here in the frame Whoop, excuse me and uh, so yeah, to take it down, it's it's actually not gonna be too bad. The lockup on it is very good. I wanna say it's about 40%, so you can see right there. It's nice and centered. 
And uh, so yeah, let's do a, a quick knife comparison on here, okay? So just go ahead and put this here and then compare it. There we go. First, we're gonna compare it with the Kaiser Gemini. This is the VG10 version, the Vanguard version that was released by Kaiser. So line up the pivot screws here so you can see the difference, not only in frame, but in blade as well, okay? Now, here is a slightly larger version of the Kaiser Rogue. It's a Dirk Pinkerton design, awesome. One cliff blade, also from Kaiser. Go ahead and match those two up next to each other. And there we go, slightly longer in the blade, slightly longer in the frame. Okay, and let's see here. We have the Kaiser Doman with an MXG deep carry clip. Okay, it's also the Vanguard line in VG10 with G10 handles. Okay. And last but not least, from the Kaisers, it is the Kaiser Envoy. This is an Azo design, also an S35BN with titanium handles. Really like this design. Uh, that deep carry clip with the counter scru uh, sunk screws is something that you very rarely see in Kaiser models right out of the factory, and I think that this is a really nice model. So, they are kind of similar in size. This one's slightly bigger, but in any case, there you go. In fact, I'll go ahead and put it right here so you can see it. Okay, now let's start with two other familiar models. This is the Spyderco Para 3 with an MXG Deep Carry kit Clip. Okay. And one more to put into the fray. This is a Kershaw Link. The uh, I believe it's the uh, House of Blade uh, version with S35 VN steel. Yeah, let me go ahead and do this. There we go, much better. That way you can see how all three measure up with each other. Okay, so as you can see, it's a pretty compact knife even with other knives that are, you know, considerably uh, smaller in, in size uh, when you consider them for EDC. All great knives, including this guy, but uh, you know, I wanted you to go ahead and see the differences between them all. Okay, so um, that being said, I wanna go into the cons for this particular knife that I feel are very important, at least for me. Okay, number one, the detent on this model. Okay, um, and I'm comparing it to other Kaisers that I have like the, um, the Azo, uh, excuse me, the Envoy from uh, Azo. Okay, this guy is extremely easy to flick. Um, it has S35 VN steel, it has, uh, you know, it's a frame lock, deep carry clip, countersunk screws. It has, you know, the uh, frame lock insert. The only thing is the pivot screws are kind of meh. But I'm going to be honest, I really like this particular design. And it actually comes out to be less than this particular design, which is smaller. It's a little bit chunkier. It feels a little bit uh, blockier in the hand. And it does not have a deep carry clip. And oh, there you go. Okay. And the detent on it is actually... You know, it's, I don't know what it is about this knife. I just, I kind of feel like it's just, it's it's a bit more difficult to flick once you've been flicking other knives that have a much lighter detent like this one. If you notice, I flicked this guy out a couple of times and it has not had a problem coming out or, you know, getting stuck mid, uh, mid presentation. This one does. And I'm just, I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of that. Okay, maybe I can take it down and adjust the pivot a little bit, maybe give it a little bit of lube, maybe that's actually what it needs. I probably, you know, do a takedown video or something like that about it, but that's something that I found that I didn't really like. And, you know, kind of reiterating what I had mentioned before about the fact that this was made for a right hand design, I understand that the market is very, very large for uh, right handed users. I myself am, am right handed, but there is also, you know, the market that requires, you know, left-handed assistance, you know, and um, yeah, it hasn't, it, uh, you know, Kaiser hasn't kind of released anything for the left-handed market with regards to the Yorkie. Granted, this is a new release, but when, um, you know, I guess what they're, they're gauging the response that they get from this particular knife to be able to go ahead and see if they, like Mastrop decided to do, um, release uh, the version of the knife 
uh, in a left-handed friendly version okay um, and you know speaking of that I mean yeah I guess it is a con um, aside from there being no left-hand version there's only two versions available there's this the plain titanium with this hole and there is the blue titanium so if you want another color or if you wanted a color without this hole you were basically going to have to um, work on the other one sandblast the handles basically and um, treat it and try to anodize it again in a different color which is you know kind of uh, it's a, that's a lot of that's a lot of stuff that you got to do just to get the you know the, the kind of knife that you like so it's just that's just me and last but not least um, I'm sure you saw it in some of my other knives like the Kaiser Rogue like on the Domin um, the Kaiser um, Envoy the uh, Kershaw Link and the Spyderco. In fact, I'm gonna bring them all out here so you can see what the common denominator is on all of these knives, okay? Let me know once you start to realize what it is that these knives have that make it different from this guy. I'll give you a hint. Yep, it's the clip. Um, they don't necessarily have to be extremely deep carry clips. I mean, you know, if you notice from the pair of three and especially the Kaiser Rogue, they're not really deep carry. Some of these are a little bit more. Uh, this one is, eh, it's kind of teetering on, on deep carry because there's just a little bit that sticks out. But this one here, um, let me see if I can find something that I can use. Kind of as, oh, I can use this actually. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stick the knife here so you can see what I'm talking about. Come on, come on, you did it before when the camera was off. Okay, here we go. This is basically as high as the fabric will go on the knife and that's how it's going to stick out of your pocket, okay? Now, in comparison, I'm gonna show you what the Envoy looks like right next to it. There it is. That is the difference between the two knives, okay? And that's what a deep carry pocket clip can do, okay? And it's not a horribly deep carry clip because some of the knife is still sticking out. But the point being, and this is especially true for uh, office carry knives, okay? Let me put this back here, is that when you carry in an office, typically, Okay, um, offices are very, you know, they're, they're very conservative when it comes to what you have in your pockets. And even up until recently, I actually got an email at my office uh, stating that, you know, uh, knives, guns, you know, any paraphernalia like that was not allowed in the office per the building owner's, um, you know, ruling, which I'm still going to carry at my job. It's just, it is what it is, you know, but I said to myself, man, why am I going to wear something like, you know, I'm going I'm to need to see a knife like the, the Yorkie. Everybody's going to see it hanging out of my pocket, you know, when a quarter of inch of it, of a, uh, you know, is sticking out. When I can just as easily use another knife that is bigger and has a deep carry clip. So, you know, that, that kind of, it made me start to have to carry a, you know, a Swiss Army knife. So anytime I brought it out, well... You know, uh, an HR representative was around or somebody like that. They would look at it and they're like, oh, okay, cool. He's not going to murder anybody with that crap, you know, um, which, hey, it does fine. But then in the meantime, you know, I have all this other stuff that I can use that I can't really use much at the office because of those rules. So I kind of like something like this, you know, that allows me to be able to go have a, ahead and have a nice knife, um, you know, good action, great steel, deep carry clip, countersunk screws, you know, good quality as you as I've come to know it from companies like Kaiser. And I wish that this had a, in other words, a deep carry, you know, option. Um, and the way that it comes, it just, it doesn't. I haven't fooled around with some of the other clips to see if they're compatible. I have a couple there that I might try out, 
but um, if I do find out something, I'll probably just edit the description at the bo uh, you know, below for this video and tell you if I find something. But as of right now, I can't really find anything. So that's those are my cons, basically. You know, it has a stiff detent. You have a right-handed uh, only carry, so it's basically limited to right-handed carry. There's only two designs available, either the plain or with the one hole. Um, and the plain one is, is uh, anodized blue already. This one is not, so you can anodize this one at least. And there is no deep carry option. Now, would I carry it? Yes, I have, and I've used it. The blade is extremely, you know, um, useful, and it's a nice small size that you can grip. Um, it may not be as ergonomic as some of the other knives that I have, like, say, for example, the Envoy, which I feel just does not get enough attention because, you know, it's not... You know from one of these sexy makers you know i mean ozzo is a badass you know knife designer but he doesn't get the credit he deserves in my opinion of course um so yeah th those are my two cents i guess or my uh you know 25 or so minutes of, of ranting on uh the kaiser yorkie okay um you can go ahead and check it out in a bunch of different places including knife joy um whom i actually picked this up from so big ups to uh chris miller and the crew over there at knife joy for going ahead and facilitating this for me um they are an excellent excellent company to deal with and if you ever have the opportunity to go ahead and deal with them you can put your knife on layaway you can go ahead and uh, pre-order the knife and as soon as it comes in they will be more than happy to ship it to you um priority because that's what they do with all my knives. I picked up my smock from them and I actually picked this up from them uh, and I plan on purchasing a lot more in the future. So um, go ahead and, and uh, give them a follow on Instagram at KnifeJoy or you can check out their website at www.knifejoy.com and they will be more than happy to help you. You can you can name drop Daily Carry Solutions if you want. I don't care. I'd be more than happy. I don't make a dime by, by going ahead and, and talking about you know uh, their, their services. The truth is the reason why I talk about them is because I I want you guys to know that there are reliable services out there uh, to be able to go ahead and get quality knives like this or any of the other ones that I showed in this video. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's basically it. Um, thank you for taking a moment to go ahead and review uh, this video with me uh, with regards to the Kaiser Yorkie. This is a Ray Laconico design as it says here on the spine. And yeah, that's basically it. Be sure to go ahead and give a like. If you enjoyed what you saw on the screen, go ahead and subscribe so you can go ahead and see some of my other videos that are upcoming and some of my existing videos that are on my page. Uh, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and uh, direct them directly to me at www.dailycarrysolutions.com or reach out to me on Instagram at dailycarrysolutions. Now remember, no matter what you choose to carry, if it's the Kaiser Yorkie, if it's the Doman, if it's the Gemini, if it's the um, the Rogue, no matter what you choose, if you EDC, think of DCS. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.